Hey everybody, Dirilly here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Code Realize, Guardian of Rebirth. Um, we have just uh, had a nice little adventure in shopping where we were accosted and uh, lost all our groceries and had to go get them again. But now we are back at the mansion and uh, we're about to tell everybody what happened. So, go ahead and sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. Then we report what had happened to us. When the topic turns to Sholmes, Lupin's expression becomes one of pure disdain. So, that pesky trickster is joining the opposition. Ah, it's troublesome. Still, he's no match against me. Still troublesome. No, it's really no big deal. It isn't. But he's really getting involved, huh? Your pride seems to be having a very public battle with your actual feelings. He must have had a really tough time during the abduction mission. That's what happens when you fight using methods that lack any depth. Consider it a lesson learned. Sh shut up! I got away, so I won! You were about to be caught when I got you! You were all impy saved me already! Not true! I was merely acting hysterical to confuse the enemy. I was planning my miraculous escape from there. I think it's only natural that the escaper is at a greater advantage when trying to flee a small space like a train. His pride as a gentleman thief won't let him get over it. After we finish reporting most of what happened, the biggest problem remaining is Victor's wanted notice. What should we do? Would it be best if we just shut ourselves in the mansion? If we do that, they'll eventually detect our location and surround us. True, the location will be easily found if both the military and the yard are looking for us on top of Twilight. Then, should we escape London and set up a hideout somewhere else? That's not a bad idea, but it's going to interfere with our search for information on Isaac. There's nowhere else as good. What? Then there's nothing we can do? No, there is one way. Victor looks up at us all, and everyone's eyes are on him. Listen carefully, Cardia. I think Twilight and Finnis are searching for you independently of the others. I don't think the British government is involved in the search for you either. Good point. If the government was looking for her, then they probably would have expanded their forces in the first place. Wait a second. Wasn't it the Queen's Guard who were trying to kidnap her in the first place? I believe that Finnis used his position to use them for his own purposes. Think about it. Even though they failed to capture her, the government hasn't launched any sort of investigation. Oh. That means that the only one the government is after is me. Victor says this with a great deal of force behind his words. St. Germain's voice hardens a little as he senses that something is off. Victor, are you considering turning yourself in? Turning himself in? Is Victor willing to sacrifice himself to divert the government's attention away from us? Even though we are fugitives at this point, I don't want to think about handing him over so easily. That would be saving ourselves at your expense. I don't like that. Impy agrees with my initial negative reaction. Hmm. I wouldn't be able to sleep with that on my conscience. I'm against it too. In response to our protests, Victor smiles grimly and waves his hand. No, that's not it. I can't let myself be captured just yet. There's still something I need to do. And what is that? Ah, it's not really relevant right now. The point is, I feel that I have a way to negotiate with the government to get them to stop chasing us. Negotiate with the government? That's a pretty outlandish idea. So, if I decide to move forward with your negotiation idea, who would we speak to? Reckless words won't get you any help. Victor slowly shakes his head at Van Helsing's challenge. It's fine. I'm not saying this out of desperation. I know we have a good chance. He quietly sighs, then turns to us with determination. 
I'm going to get Victoria on our side. Victoria? You don't mean Queen Victoria. Yes, that's exactly who I mean. As I mentioned before, Queen Victoria wants to capture me. She wants certain knowledge that I have. But her greatest fear is that knowledge will be leaked to other countries. If what I know gets out, the current international situation could be overturned and place Britain in a difficult position. Uh, international situation, huh? That's quite a large stage you speak of. So, you're thinking of approaching Queen Victoria, using this knowledge as a bargain chip? Yes, in exchange for not spreading my secret to other countries, I will ask her to guarantee our safety and freedom. I'll expose to her that Twilight is after us as well, and have her restrict Finnis's actions so that we're not targeted. That way, we can resolve all the problems surrounding us at once. Hmm, and what is this knowledge? I can't tell you. I wonder why. I thought I saw a dark shadow cross Victor's face when this was bought up. Hmm, no matter. If you're that confident, then you probably stand a good chance of success. If you get results, I have no complaints about the methods involved. But, Victor, this isn't something that can be done easily, right? There must be a reason why you've been running all this time without doing this. Uh, you're very perceptive. You're right, Cardia. It was something I've been considering, but Queen Victoria is the highest-ranking politician. If she doesn't agree, I'll probably be locked up in some research lab, never to see the light of day again. That's why I escaped. Are you sure? You're going to have the most dangerous role if you're trying to use yourself as a negotiation piece. That's fine. I don't want to cause trouble for all of you. I can see a strong light in Victor's gentle eyes behind his glasses. Victoria and Finnis, we're up against the most powerful people in the country. If we miss this opportunity, we'll be swallowed up by their power in the blink of an eye. The more time passes, the tighter the noose Twilight, the military, and the police is creating will be. Before they catch us, we have to make the first move. That naturally puts all of you in a dangerous position as well. I know it's a lot to ask, but I need your help. We all look at one another, and then... Why not? I'm in. You need a breakthrough either way, and if you say you're ready to take this on, I have no objections. Then I'm in too. It would be totally lame if we get caught and didn't even put up a fight before being thrown in prison. You don't even need to ask me. Life as a refugee was getting pretty cramped. I was becoming bored with it. If we have a means to free ourselves of this situation, we should go for it, no matter what. Then I shall cooperate as well, though I don't think there is much I can do. I'm fine, if that's what Victor wants. Thank you, everyone. I promise I will repay all of you for this kindness. Victor says this with his usual smile. But, for some reason, it looks to me like his smile is forced. The next night. I sit alone at my desk, writing. I am reviewing emergency first aid methods and gun construction plans Victor and Van Helsing taught me respectively. If I can remember my first aid properly, I can avoid any confusion in the heat of the moment, and knowing a gun's construction can lead to knowing how to handle an opponent who is carrying a gun. None of this knowledge is for direct application, but knowing it will help me make calm decisions when the time comes. That is what I've been told anyway. I wonder how long it's been. I stretched a little and opened the window to let the night breeze in. Then... Victor... I see Victor out in the yard. Whatever he's thinking, he's just sitting silently, unmoving. I consider what to do for a while, then decide to join him in the yard. 
There is something I want to tell him. And when I arrive, Victor still doesn't show any indication that he'll move. I try waiting for a little while, but nothing changes, so I decide to speak up. Aren't you going to sleep, Victor? Oh! It seems like he didn't notice me walk up close to him. He almost drops his book in surprise. Oh, sorry. I didn't think I'd scare you so much. <laughs> sorry about that. I was just thinking about something and didn't realize you were here. What are you doing here? Did you come to feel the night breeze? I was studying in my room when I saw you out here. You are studying this late? It's good that you're enthusiastic about learning, but don't overwork yourself. All right, but it's fun to review all the things that everyone has taught me, and very beneficial as well. <laughs> I see. You're a hard worker. I need to be the same way. Um, thank you. Huh? For what? For thinking about everyone. If your suggestion works out, it'll guarantee safety for all of us. Then it will be easier to find something about father. It's nothing. I'm... I'm just thinking about my own safety. Even so, it's still going to save us all as a result. That's why I wanted to thank you. Thank you, Victor. You shouldn't be thanking me. I'm a horrible person. I don't understand why he would say this, or what is so horrible about him. I think you're a very respectable person. Victor looks so incredibly sad that I want to make him smile somehow. You're very kind and considerate, and smart and courageous. I respect you so much. That's so kind of you to say. I never thought that someone would say that about me. Victor smiles his usual smile, but it seems like an act, and more fragile than ever. All right, let's call it a night. Staying up late isn't good for us. All right, let's go. I'm worried about Victor, but it's probably not my place to step any further than I already have. I turn around to see Victor still sitting in the same spot. Victor, aren't you going back to your room? Hmm? Oh, right. I just thought maybe... I'll sit here and think for a little while longer. Would it be all right if I sat next to you? Why? Just because. <laughs> Just because? Victor laughs, and this time his smile is very natural. The next day... All right, everyone. There's no time like the present. I scraped together all the information I could to create our plan. Lupin is speaking to us as we gather around the dining room table for breakfast. The dark circles under his eyes are probably due to that hard work. So, as to how we will accomplish the goal of getting Victor to negotiate with Queen Victoria. For starters, the biggest problem is probably finding a way to meet her. Could we send her a letter? It would be safe. That would likely be difficult. If we can't trust the messenger, it's doubtful that the letter will reach her. Right. It probably wouldn't be effective. When you set out to blackmail someone, you need to make it clear you have power. We need a method that'll make them think that we won't go down easy. We have to make ourselves look strong, even if it's fake. Make ourselves look strong? How exactly do we go about doing that? Stop being vague and give us an example. In short, we're going to raid Buckingham Palace and confront Her Majesty the Queen in person. W uh, r raid Are you crazy? You're going to turn the entire country against us. Wait, Impy, knowing Lupin, there's a chance of success here, isn't there? Lupin smiles confidently and spreads a large blueprint across the table. This is the layout of Buckingham Palace. It's the center of the administration and the royal family's personal residence. Queen Victoria usually stays within the heavily guarded palace, so we'll never be able to reach her directly. 
in a sense, she's tougher to get to than Finnis. However, there will be an opportunity coming up when Victoria makes a public appearance for a knighting ceremony. What is that exactly? It's something of a governmental event. Bestowing knighthood is normally conducted within the palace. However, it has become customary for the Queen's ceremony to take place outside to allow the public to see the glory. Obviously, there will be copious amounts of security, and since the public can attend, there will be a grand turnout. Oh, and also... It was at this event that Van Helsing was given the greatest title a knight can receive, the most excellent order. Wow, you really are amazing, Van Helsing. Hmm. So, we burst into the ceremony, then make them promise in front of everyone there that they won't lay a finger on Victor. Isn't it dangerous to do something like this in front of so many people? That's what makes it so great. We'll make a showy entrance to create the illusion that Victor has powerful backers. The other benefit is that we can use all the civilians there as hostages. L Lupin, we can't do that. That would make us actual terrorists, if we involved innocent people. Yes, I think it's too dangerous. All part of the plan, we're laying it all out for the Queen to make it easier for her to make that decision. What do you mean? This is what he means. If the Queen were to obey the commands of a terrorist, her authority would crumble. But. If she makes a painful decision in order to save her people, her rule will become even more solidified. You're awfully considerate, even of your blackmailee. The title of Gentleman Thief shines brighter than usual today. Ha <laughs> <laughs> Of course! I am starting to think that I don't fully understand what a gentleman is anymore. That's good, Cardia. That's a normal reaction. Yet, she may say she'll release Victor in that moment, only to take back her words later. Shouldn't we be considering the possible risks we might be facing? A battle of wills against Queen Victoria is no small thing. I can't imagine that she would fall for this ploy so easily. Leave that to me. In true Lupin form, I'll call her bluff. Lupin nods firmly in response to Victor's words. The knighting ceremony takes place in exactly five days. Why don't we begin our preparations? After that, we started to prepare for the negotiation to come. We used an automobile to carry the ornithopter into an alley near a certain hotel in the city. This is so we can land right in front of Queen Victoria as she appears at the beginning of the ceremony. Aside from that, we double-checked and procured items to protect ourselves, as well as secured our escape route. But since the plan is merely to get us in front of Queen Victoria, there was no complicated contraptions like that on the train. On the day of the mission, we decide to go to the hotel that we have placed the ornithopter behind. You want me to house it? How dare you? Why would I... From Delhi's response, it seems he's not very willing to cooperate. However, he begrudgingly agrees to stay at the mansion, since he doesn't know of any other places he could go to kill time. Well, I guess it's acceptable, but I do not understand why I should have to take care of Cece. Normally, I wouldn't bother attending to the needs of an animal, but I'll do it for him. He does look rather pleased about caring for Cece, though. All right, we're all ready. I had the option of staying as well, but everyone agreed that my skill would be of good use during the mission. I know it's important to stay alert and keep my defenses up, but more than that, I'm so happy to hear everyone say that they needed my help. The day of the mission. I hear fireworks going off, far away. We are staying in a room at a hotel, 
some distance from Buckingham Palace. Victor, looking out the window anxiously, takes a nervous breath. It looks like they're starting. I need to make this work for all our sakes. Relax, Vicky. We've gotten through some bad scrapes in the past. We can handle this. I'm coming along with you, so you needn't worry if anything comes up. Anything will not be coming up, ever. All right, everyone. It's almost time. Get ready. I'll stay here and wait with Impy. I'll help with the escape on the ornithopter. If something happens... Do I have everything right? Lupin looks like he's about to agree, then suddenly furrows his brow. What's the matter, Lupin? Shh. Quiet. This is strange. Tch. Looks like anything did come up. The gentleman thief's plans never do measure up, do they? Van Helsing sighs and continues cleaning his gun. Hey now! Don't scare me! Do you feel some sort of presence? Just the opposite. There are no footsteps from the floors above or below us. We're alone in this hotel right now. Uh-huh. It seems that way. How can you even tell that? Are you wizards or something? Suddenly, there is a high-pitched mechanical squeal from outside. Ahem. Testing, testing. That voice. We're probably all picturing the same face right now. Ahem. <clears throat> This is Captain Rempart Leonhart of the Royal Family Guard. This hotel is surrounded by two hundred British soldiers. Surrender now. Captain Leonhart? Whoa, whoa, whoa! What's he doing here? Isn't it obvious? The government must have been made aware of our plans. That's impossible! There's no way they could have caught on. I was so careful to cover my tracks. Van Helsing, looking out through a different window, responds. There is no denying that we're surrounded. If what Leonhardt says is true, two hundred, huh, might be trouble. You think? This is what's called a dire situation. What are we going to do? Lupin falls silent, looking serious. After a brief silence, it isn't Lupin who speaks first. It's Victor. Change of plans. I'll draw their attention, and you guys get out of here. What? Leonhard is the captain of Victoria's personal guard. He works under different orders than Twilight. If that's the case, then he's only after me alone. I'll tell them that I threatened you to shelter me and act alongside me. But what will happen to you? I'll be fine. I'll negotiate after I've been captured. I'll get through this. Victor cuts the conversation off, as if to say he won't accept any other option. I... Oh, I don't... I don't think we can let him do this. I don't want him to get split up from us, I don't think. I feel like there should be a better team way to do it, so I'm going to say can't let him do this. I... I won't let you do this. It's too early to start sacrificing ourselves to help everyone. Everyone looks at me in shock. What's the matter? Oh, it's just that you never really raise your voice like that. But I can't just let you give yourself up for this. Victor smiles gently. Yeah, me neither. My vote's with her. Mine, too. I appreciate the sentiment, but this is probably the only way. Victor, I reject your idea. What? Why? True, we're surrounded by the army, but there's always the possibility that Twilight could take you away from the army's grasp. That's... Twilight will use any means they can. They could hide you from the government on their own and torture you. Then, they will extract information on the girl's whereabouts from you, and then we'll all be in trouble. And you, Arsene Lupin, I know you're in there as well. Expect proper retribution for what you've done. 
I swear, I'll see you in chains for interference with, with public duties. That old man sounds more upset about me than he is about Victor. <laughs> then Lupin may prove to be a better decoy than Victor. But, no matter the case, the ideal situation is one in which none of us is captured. Even if one of us gets caught, there's a chance that all of us will be placed at risk as consequence. I think so too. Victor, this problem is bigger than just you now. You guys. It's okay. If it really comes down to it, we'll throw you at them and run. So don't worry. Impy, you're terrible. What? I was just kidding. That was a joke. Stop glaring at me like that. It's strangely attractive. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. He smiles for a moment, then his expression becomes serious once again. There's one thing left that we can do. Let's force our plan forward. What does that mean? We'll split into a diversion team and a negotiation team and act separately. While the diversion team diverts the enemy attention, the negotiation team pushes past the guards to the ornithopter. Then, we'll go straight to the ceremony and barge in from the sky, speak with Victoria, and negotiate for our safety. Worst case, if the diversion team is caught, I promise I'll get you out. Ah, <sighs> I'll go along with it if I must, but this is one crazy plan. It's the only choice we have. Our situation won't improve if we continue to lay low here. I don't mind. Either way, it sounds positively stimulating. Right then, we're all going along with Victor's plan. How about you, Cardia? Yes, I'm fine. Arsene Lupin and accomplices, this is your final warning. Surrender now, or who knows what will happen to you. Sheesh, when did that old man's top priority become capturing me? Hey, Cardia, what exactly did Lupin do to Leonhardt? Huh? He rescued me from them. He likely takes pride in his work and his position. He's not a bad man, just a bit of a blowhard. I bear him no ill will, but he needs to be silenced for a bit. Van Helsing quickly loads his shotgun and places himself against one side of the window. When he reaches out to open it, suddenly something flies into the room, breaking the window. Smoke begins pouring out of the object. It's tear gas. Everyone, out of the room! He shouts, and we all leave the room, as if the gas was chasing us. But a row of soldiers are standing in the hall waiting for us. Ha! <laughs> ha! You're all so prepared! I don't remember that old man being this efficient. You should always expect the unexpected. I thought that would be second nature to you. A single man steps out in front of the soldiers. You are much better at falling into traps than I'd hoped. I have to thank you for making my job so much easier. You. It makes sense now. Herlock Sholmes, you are the one acting behind the scenes here. It honors me that one of the century's greatest thieves, Arsene Lupin, knows my name. Sholmes, what are you doing here? Have you already forgotten what transpired a few days ago? I was hired by the government to assist them in their investigations. I told you that when next we meet it would be as foes. As I recall, I told both you and the gentleman over there. <laughs> you are a man of your word. Leonhardt has requested the arrest of both Victor Frankenstein and Arsene Lupin. He probably can't stand the fact that the man he let escape is continuing to commit acts of terrorism. How did you know we would be here today? I have a massive number of criminological statistics stored right here. Sholmes taps his forehead with a finger. 
Lupin, I tried predicting your next move, based on your previous crimes, and I'm pleased to say my analysis proved correct. The greatest thief of the century is still simply a criminal. This plan of yours is lacking originality. That was uncalled for. Ha! <laughs> no offense was intended. Now, let's end this meaningless chatter and get you all arrested. Sholmes snaps his fingers, and the guards surrounding us start to close in. I suppose we have no other choice. He begins to lift his gun. But Victor grabs the barrel, lowering it. The two exchange a glance, then Victor looks forward once again. I apologize, but I can't be captured just yet. Well and good to say, but all your exits have been blocked. This hallway, the hotel lobby, even the streets are blockaded. There is no way out. Yes, there is. Just one. <laughs> Victor throws a test tube from his pocket. Not towards the enemy, but at his own feet. Everyone is puzzled for a moment at this strange action. Then, with a spectacular crash, the floor falls through. Ah! Cardia! Victor catches me in an embrace as we fall. We land on the floor below us, together. Are you alright? Yes, I'm fine, thank you. Though Victor is a little shaky himself, he stands me up on my feet. Whoa, that was scary! Let's get the heck out of here! We all start running together, as a team. We run down the hall, then use the stairs to go all the way down to the ground floor. We head for the rear entrance. So far, we haven't seen any soldiers. Was well, that some kind of bomb that explodes in the direction of its impact? That would be a pretty handy gadget. To be honest, it was a gamble, but I'm glad it worked out. Now, what shall we do? The Count looks as cool as always. How is he so calm and collected? I don't know what to do. Let's keep going with Victor's plan. Me, Van Helsing, and St. Germain will handle the enemies around the hotel. Hm. <laughs> a mere two hundred of them won't pose a threat. I'm not very good at roughhousing, but I suppose we have no other choice. Cardia, you go with Victor, got it? Fine. I'll leave this to you. Oh? I was quite certain you would opt to stay behind, knowing your personality. That's good judgment, Miss Cardia. That's fine. As long as I'm here, they will never be able to overpower us. We continue to run. We're almost at the hotel's rear entrance. Then suddenly... Watch out! St. Germain pushes me aside, and a sharp sound cracks through the air. Whoa! What now? The Count quickly pushes me behind him, and several Twilight soldiers come dashing around the corner ahead of us. Get out of the way. Van Helsing's quick gunfire blows away the approaching enemies in an instant. Why is Twilight here? The police and military always make a show of taking action. I'm sure it was easy for Twilight to find out about it. As he speaks, several more Twilight troops appear and block our way. Hmm. They just keep coming. So prepared. As Van Helsing steps forward, St. Germain puts out a hand to stop him. I'll take this. Count. Go ahead, especially you, Van Helsing. You have the important task of keeping the army soldiers at bay. Fine, let's go. Everyone begins to move at this. C 
Can we really just leave him? There won't be a problem. I can tell from the way he carries himself the Count is highly skilled. They won't stand a chance against him. I'm sure he'll handle them in an instant. Finally an exit! Let's get the hell out of this place! Impy kicks down the door, and the sunlight rushes in at us. This is where we had concealed the ornithopter. Ah. About twenty army soldiers are positioned here, surrounding the machine. They have their guns pointed at us. Ah, soldiers here too? I hate to admit it, but it looks like Sholmes really did see through our plans. Arsene Lupin, I finally found you. It's time for you to give in, at last. Leonhardt appears from behind the soldiers. It's like that old man doesn't even care about Victor anymore. I will capture you, right now, and clear my name. Lupin and accomplices, give yourselves up now! Whoa, whoa, whoa! What can we do? We've had so many close calls, I don't know what to do anymore. It's easy. They can see through our plans. Then there's only one thing left to do. Defeat them by force. Do they actually think they can stop me with this handful of peons? You! How could you defy the government when you're supposed to be a hero? Huh. I threw away any accolades a long time ago. I have no regrets. You threw it away? How dare you treat an honorable title given to you by Her Majesty that way? Arrest him for Le Majesté! Or however it said. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Van Helsing moves before any of the troops can react to Leonhardt's commands. A series of explosions goes off at the soldiers' feet, and a cloud of dust rises. What? <coughs> Damn, I can't see a thing. Victor, we'll clear the path. Run. This way, Cardia. Victor takes my hand and starts running through the cloud. Phew! They didn't break it. Now hurry up and get in. Time for our great escape into the skies. Victor and I have already jumped into the ornithopter before Impy, and he causes it to lift off. The ornithopter rises into the air, stirring the air around it with the wind. Huh? Are you intent on reaching Her Majesty? I swear on my honor, I will not allow this. Leonhardt grabs the side of the ornithopter as it lifts off, attempting to drag it down. Because of this, the ornithopter begins to lean dangerously to the side. Whoa! Hey, the balance! Sorry, Captain. I'm going to have to put you to sleep for a bit. Victor hits Leonhardt in the face with a test tube. He tumbles to the ground and falls right to sleep. Was that another antiseptic? Yep. It's a little on the strong side. Yes! Now our path is clear! Full speed ahead! The ornithopter begins to fly through the air at tremendous speed as it releases a copious amount of steam. It's so fast! <laughs> it didn't quite have the horsepower to carry the three people before. I made a new device that releases built-up steam from the steam engine in order to provide more thrust. What do you think, huh? It's so fast and smooth, right? I Impy, watch where you're going! Whoa! Impy barely avoids a chimney and continues to speed up. Express flight for two to Buckingham Palace. Next stop, Queen Victoria. True to Impey's words, Buckingham Palace gets bigger and bigger as we close in. Then, something floats up from behind the palace. Oh man, it's a military airship from the British Airborne Knights. 
It sounds like the floating ship fires something at us. Suddenly, something whooshes past the side of the ornithopter. Fire rises from the city behind us. Whoa! They're seriously shooting at us! We're in the middle of London here! I'm sure that's Twilight working without the Crown's direction. It would be a great inconvenience to them if we met the Queen. If it's an inconvenience for Twilight, does that mean it's convenient for us? Yes! Impy, you've got to dodge their attacks and get us to the knighting ceremony. Seriously? I mean, I knew I had to, but it's not going to be easy. Impy, please. Leave it to me, my lady. Get ready to have your minds blown by my out-of-this-world flight maneuvers. True to his word, Impy guides the ornithopter with surprising dexterity. If even a single shot had hit us, the ornithopter would have been blown to bits, but he continues to avoid the shells. Dodging and weaving, past shot after shot, we finally arrive right above the palace. The power of love is invincible! He proceeds to dive the ornithopter straight into the middle of the ceremony. It feels like we're about to crash. What is that? Is it a plane? Is it a bird? That... that machine! I saw it at the World Fair! It's an ornithopter! Is it me, or is it getting closer? Your Majesty, please stand back! I can hear the crowd's uproar from all the way up here. I can also see many soldiers running towards a woman. Could that be... the Queen? I don't have much time to observe my surroundings as the machine speeds straight towards the ground. We're going to come to a sudden stop, so make sure you don't bite your tongue. The ornithopter begins to pull out of its power dive, groaning as our path curves upward. But this isn't enough to kill the momentum. We kick up a cloud of dirt as we carve our way across the ground and finally stop. The fact that the machine is now touching the ground brings me great relief. I heave a great sigh. Was that a successful landing? Looks like it. Thanks, Impy. That was some fantastic flying. Ha <laughs> I'm glad we didn't all end up at the gates to heaven. We all climb out onto the ground amidst a dumbfounded crowd. Who are they? Th that man with the glasses. Isn't that violent terrorist Victor Frankenstein? Frankenstein? As confused voices rise up around us, the cloud of dirt slowly settles. A woman, surrounded by soldiers, appears in our view, standing on a stage right in front of us. How dare you act with such disrespect before Her Majesty! This is unforgivable! Her Majesty, the Queen. Man, the Queen is really sexy. So, this is Queen Victoria, after all. She's very beautiful. But at the same time, she is a woman with so much power that the tension in the air is almost palpable. Surround them! Do not let them escape! Soldiers around the area all aim their guns at us at once. Out of the frying pan and into the fire! I'm going to cry! If we utter the wrong words at this moment, they won't hesitate to shoot us. Don't panic. Stay calm. I tried to tell myself this, but I can't gather my thoughts properly. As this is going on, Victor takes a firm step towards Queen Victoria with a determined look. Soldiers, it would be unwise to shoot me. Victor calls out in a confident voice. His gaze seems cold-hearted somehow. It's like he isn't his usual self. Right now, I would believe that he is an actual terrorist ready to deliver certain death to all those around him. 
Nobody move. One step and you die. I have planted bombs throughout the ceremonial grounds. This radio switch controls their detonation. Victor raises a small device into the air. Screens ring out from within the audience. That, that's the toy that he, that he had me make for him. A toy? Yeah, it doesn't do anything. Detonation switch, my patootie. I look over at the queen while I listen to Impy's whispers. If they catch us in this lie, there's a 99% chance we'll all be executed. Have the guards stand back. B but every single person here is a precious subject of my nation, and none of this is worth any loss of life. Uh, as you command, your majesty. The guards standing near the queen give a signal, and the soldiers lower their guns. Good. Everybody stand still. My accomplices are watching all of this. If anyone tries anything funny, this entire area will become a sea of flames. Your Highness, have the guards stand at a distance. I need to speak with you alone. Fine. Victoria glances at her guards. In a matter of seconds, the area around us is deserted. They're probably all watching the situation breathlessly. But, other than the speakers, Impy and I are probably the only ones who can overhear this conversation. It's been a while, Dr. Frankenstein. When was the last time I saw your face? Two years ago, Your Highness. Two years? Is that all? I feel as if it was decades ago. Ah. Uh, what's so funny? It's delightful to watch you try so hard. You treated me with such respect only two years ago. Now you're acting like a little puppy who won't do as he is told. Queen Victoria, how can you say that, knowing what you did in the past? There's no need to raise your voice. I can hear you, Doctor. Did you come all the way here just to complain to me? I'm done complaining now. I came here to negotiate with you. And don't look so angry. What is this about? Retract my wanted status. Also, guarantee my safety from this point on, and grant me pardon for this act as well. That's all I ask. There is a brief silence. At this moment, there's no room for Impy or me to intervene. All we can do is sit tight and listen to the exchange between Victor and the Queen, and try to guess the outcome of their talk. The Queen sneers at Victor. Dr. Frankenstein, are you telling me that you, a mere scientist, mean to threaten me, the Queen of the British Empire? I am prepared to forgive you if you agree to work for Britain once again. I will never again assist you in your ambitions. I see. Then I have no use for you. Would you like to die with your companions? You don't have any power in this situation. I do. And what power do you have that you could change my mind? I'm prepared to release the secrets regarding that which you so desire to other nations. I've given copies of this information to a number of compatriots. If anything should happen to me, all of Europe will know. This special knowledge Victor possesses is his only real bargaining chip in this negotiation. But the Queen simply looks amused at this threat. I see. <laughs> that is interesting. It seems you've changed, Dr. Frankenstein. Is it the influence of your friends? I'm not here to make small talk. What about the lady over there? Is she your friend? The Queen suddenly looks over at us. Her gaze feels sticky and clings to me. What a beautiful girl! She's like a porcelain doll. And, oh, I knew I'd seen someone with a similar feel about them before. The little boy, Finnis, he has the same doll-like appearance. How strange! How are you so similar to the little one? You seem agitated, Dr. Frankenstein. <laughs> this is getting more interesting by the moment. That one is full of secrets. Little girl, if you're connected to Finnis's secret somehow, I'm afraid I'll want to keep you. 
She gives me a long stare. Her gaze feels like it's touching me directly, and I take a step back. Ahem. Impy steps in front of me, as if to hide me from her line of sight. Th thank you, Impy. I thank him in a small voice, and he raises a hand and waves it. Let's hear what you have to say in response, Your Highness. I have no problem turning this whole venue into an inferno. The Queen merely smiles. Then... Enough with the petty lies. Did you really believe that you would trick Queen Alexandrina Victoria with a toy like that? We all gasp. How could she know? Ah, oh, that reaction. It seems I was right. <laughs> I have a soft spot for bad liars. Whoa, playing dirty. She pulled a fast one on us. Politics are a constant game of bargaining. Your childish antics don't even come close to a real negotiation. Scientists need to stop playing at politics and focus on their research. Impy, take her and stand back. As if sensing something from Victor's serious tone, Impy says nothing and steps back with me. Once he has seen that we have backed away, Victor slowly takes a leather case from his jacket. He takes out a single test tube. This is a special liquid explosive. If I drop this on the ground, not even you would be able to escape death. Oh, I see that you're not bluffing this time around. Victor, what are you? I try to dart towards him, but Impy stops me. Not now. Victor's one thing, but we have no idea what the Queen would do if we make a move towards them. But... Victor's hands are shaking slightly. Go ahead, do it. Death is salvation, but a coward like you would probably hesitate to take hold of a savior's hand. He's going to do it. He's going to kill himself and take the queen with him. Victor! I break free of Impy's grasp and run toward him. Cardia! N no! Get away from me! No, Victor! This isn't right. I take his shaking arm and gently lower it. You don't need to do this. No one wants to see you sacrifice yourself. Victor says nothing in response and looks down at the ground. I worry about Victor's feelings, but part of my mind is calm and understands the situation. The only leverage we have now is to release Victor's information to other countries. And even that is a lie. If she sees through this lie, too, it's over for us. I look at the Queen. I can't tell what she's thinking at all behind her smiling face. There is silence, and then... Fine, Doctor. I'm satisfied, knowing that you will not become an enemy of the State. I have no way of knowing if you're lying or speaking the truth. But... If you really do take what you know outside this country's borders, Britain, as we know it, will be over. But you should know that whatever relationships you have with your friends will dissolve before that comes to pass. I'll keep my end of the deal. The Queen nods resolutely in response. Naturally, but Dr. Frankenstein, I believe that you are truly intelligent. And that's why I can say for certain that you aren't going through all this trouble just for the sake of your comrades. You could have fled the country long ago, yet you remain in London. Why is that? I'm quite interested. What a reason do you have for staying here? In this country, in this city? Victor says nothing and simply stares at the Queen. <laughs> Fine. I'll just keep an eye on you for now. You can have this win. Oh, Victor, just make sure not to cross me again. I'll keep that in mind. The Queen smiles boldly. 
That seems to signal an end to this. Impy and I take deep breaths, and the queen slowly walks out in front of us to look around at everyone in attendance. My beloved subjects, there is something that I would have you know. Victoria's clear voice fills the air. I was given proof just now that all charges placed against Victor Frankenstein were false accusations. In the name of the Crown, I proclaim his innocence and guarantee his safety. From this moment, anyone attempting to harm him or his companions, without my consent, is an enemy of the British Crown. The crowd murmurs in reaction to the Queen's words. It seems to go on forever. So, now that that's all done, cheers! And I am going to go ahead and end this video on that note. I know it ran really long, but I just couldn't stop in the middle. <laughs> So, um, I hope you, uh, I hope it wasn't too bad for you all who hung in there. <laughs> I'll try to keep things from going this long in the future, uh, even if I have to break things in the middle of action sequences. So anyway, I hope to see you in my future videos, and I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. They're really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.